Westfield Memorial Hospital provides high-quality health care to residents of Western New York, offering patients the most sophisticated medical advancements while keeping the ease and familiarity of a community hospital. Support for Chautauqua Sunrise has been provided by WRFA 107.9 FM, Jamestown's public radio station, streaming online 24-7 at WRFALP.com. Low power to the people. Meter's Restaurant, a family tradition for over 50 years in downtown Ripley, is a proud supporter of Chautauqua Sunrise. Meter's provides all-day dining, banquet services, and custom catering specializing in pie. Funding for Chautauqua Sunrise is provided in part by the Chautauqua County Industrial Development Agency with offices in Jamestown and Dunkirk helping businesses to prosper throughout Chautauqua County. From supporting people with disabilities to enjoy great lives to providing health care services that are available to anyone, the Resource Center has been improving our county for more than 60 years. Learn more about how the Resource Center makes a positive difference in people's lives. Is getting vaccinated on your to-do list? We can help you check it off because we make getting vaccinated easy. You've got this because we've got you. To learn more, visit yougotthis.usaging.org. From the Access Chautauqua Studios in Mayville, it's Chautauqua Sunrise. Chautauqua Sunrise is hosted by Doc Hamels and supported by the award-winning volunteers at Access Chautauqua. We are here to share local news, colorful interviews, and events of interest to everyone. Talk with Sunrise is broadcast live Saturday mornings each week from 9 to 10 a.m. Send events via email or call us live. Check us out on YouTube and Facebook. And now from the Access Chautauqua Studios, it's Chautauqua Sunrise. Good morning, everybody. I'm Doc Hamels, and if you're just uh, joining us for the first time, welcome. Woo! Well, they said last week we had three seasons. It's going to happen again. It was like spring yesterday. It's fall today, and tomorrow we're supposed to have a half a foot of snow. What the heck is that all about? But you know, there's an old farmer saying that the peepers, you know, those little itty bitty frogs that peep at night, they have to look through glass or ice three times before spring is official. So I don't know if this is one or two. I'm hoping it's number three, but we'll see. Anyways, thanks for joining us today. We've got a wonderful show in store for you. Uh, as many of you know that I'm sort of a history buff, uh, and uh, especially things like I'm the town historian in Ripley, and um, Jim McQuiston and I do our uh, video podcast on Oak Island. And um, today we're going we're gonna to talk about some cool stuff here in Chautauqua County, and I'm going to bet a lot of you don't even know some of the facts that we're going to cover today with my guests. So stay tuned, especially if you like to know more about the history of Western Chautauqua County down on Lake Erie. There's a teaser for you. All right, good afternoon for all my listeners on WRFA 107.9, low power to the people, Tuesdays at 1 o'clock. Thanks for joining us. Once again, uh, it's always a pleasure to be broadcasting in Jamestown, and I hope you're having a great week, and that uh, I guess the snow by now is gone, so if you're listening on Tuesday, I think uh, it's all melted. Throughout the show, if you have a comment or question, you can say, Tell me more about what you're talking about in that historical situation there in western Chautauqua County. Give us a call, 716-753-5225. And uh, Randy, our operator, will take your call and he'll pipe it through my earpiece here and we'll be talking to you. And if you're shy, don't worry about it. Just tell them your question or comment and they'll get that to me right away. And I think that happened last week. Somebody made a uh, comment about the eclipse, so no big deal. Uh, if you have a fundraiser, what better way to get free advertising? We don't charge, you know. 
uh, give it to us on our phone and uh, we'll get it out here to the rest of the world. As you know, we stream live around the world. Good good morning, good afternoon. Let me make sure. Four o'clock in the afternoon in Kiev, Ukraine. Uh, Natalia and crew, good afternoon. Good afternoon to my cousins in the Netherlands and Belgium, wherever you are in the world, all across the United States, all different time zones, okay? Um, we will get that information out to whomever. So your, 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 your chicken barbecue, your Eclipse project, whatever you're gonna be doing in the coming weeks and months, give us a call, drop us a line. Oh, how do you do it by line? Pop that up, Jeff. You just email me at Chautauqua Sunrise at gmail.com. See how easy this is? They just magically appear, okay? And once again, the phone number, if you want to call in today, is 716-753-5225. For those of you are listening to me in Jamestown, if you want to actually physically watch the show, you can go to YouTube, just put in Chautauqua Sunrise, put in the date of the show, whatever, uh, and it'll pop up and you can actually see us. Okay. What do we got going here? Um, snow. Boy, did, was it windy last night at your house? Yes. Holy cow. It, it came in like a train. It just shook our house. We live up on the escarpment in Ripley, and it was like, I said to my wife, what am I listening to? It was just rumbling all night. So kind of 20 degree drop, and I guess it's supposed to get a little colder throughout the day and, and snow tomorrow. So be careful out there. Don't uh, put the snow shovels away qu quite yet. All right, I have some announcements that I want to share with you. We're going to get through there, and my guest is just so excited to get on here and waiting in the wings. So let's let's get to some announcements from our friends in Jamestown at the <clears throat> Pearl City Clayhouse. We've talked about this in the past, and they've got some really fun things going on. And I'm going to touch on maybe a half dozen of them. So let's here we go. All right, coffee and clay. This is going to be March fifteenth, one o'clock to three. Uh, what's going on there? They're throwing on the wheel, along with some time for coffee, a sweet treat, and a chance to meet and greet. Um, so if, you, if you've never taken some clay, throw it on a wheel and make a, a pot or whatever they make, uh, sounds like fun. I've never done that. I've got to try that sometime. Then, uh, let's see here. Uh, i got to figure this out. Okay, uh, then there's on the 15th, same day, from 5.30 to 6.30, there's the quick clay sugar saver. Don't know what that means. As its name suggests, a sugar saver is a small piece of porous clay that is designed to uh, keep brown sugar soft and ready for use. Sugar savers may be the easiest and cutest way to save your brown sugar for a longer period of time. Well, it costs 10 bucks. Then they got clay with Renee. That's kind of catchy. Uh, six o'clock that evening of the 15th. These are open-ended sessions for you to make whatever you like. Uh, they supply an instructor with years of hand building experience. The event is fee includes using their clay tools, textures, stamps, expert help from the instructor, and a pound of clay, $20. Quick clay sugar saver. Now, wait a minute, that's a repeat. Well, these are doubled up. Skip that one. Okay, I got it. Also, they do what they call felted friends. That's the next day from 1 to 5, that's March 16th. Join Debbie Penley for an afternoon of creativity. Debbie will cover the basics of creating a felted figure structure. Then you can customize and experiment to make any creation you want using your imagination. $45 includes tea and snacks. Uh, that's from 1 to 5 on March 16th. Felt figure. Soup and a sandwich, that sounds good. March 20th from 6 p.m. to 8 p.m. There's still plenty of chili soup weather left, so why not make the best of it with, uh, with a custom soup and sandwich? This is a beginner level class suitable for older teens and adults. Teens must be accompanied by an adult though, cost is $35. Then they've got quick clay plant, excuse me, plant tags, that's kind of hard to say. Uh, March 22nd, 5.30 to 6.30 p.m., and that's just one more class that you can in, get involved with. That's just the first, uh, middle of March, and so they got all kinds of cool projects. So if you're interested, uh, yeah, let's see, hang on. Give them a call at 716-488-CLAY or 488-2529, okay? So if you uh, Want something to do in the next month? Sounds like a lot of fun at the Pearl City Clayhouse. All right, let's go to my hometown, Ripley Artist Event. Okay, let's pop that up, Jeff. 
All right, basically this is a call out to anybody that would like to participate in the uh, library's annual art festival. Uh, they're looking for any artists that want to display their work for an art exhibition, uh, March 16th through the 30th, and there's all the different categories, painting, drawing, sculpture, photography. So you can go to, go to the Pearl City uh, Pottery, you can make something, and then you can display it. How's that? Uh, if you want to submit it, give them a call at the library, 716-736-3913. I know a lot of folks do uh, photography, but maybe this winter you're working on some special art project. Okay, let's keep going. Um, okay, um, this one's just new. I, I hadn't seen this one before. As the moon gracefully casts its shadow across a vast stretch of the United States, Mexico, and Canada on April 8th, Chautauqua County, Jamestown Airport, is set to be the epicenter of a two-day celestial celebration. I should have something like spooky music on in the background. Locals and visitors alike are invited to immerse themselves in the midday darkness and witness the eclipse spectacle beginning around 3.15 locally. Festivities will unfold on April 7th, the night before, and the 8th uh, at the Chautauqua County Jamestown Airport fly-by-night event, kicking off with a pancake breakfast each morning Starting at 7, attendees will have ample time to revel in the celestial wonders and engaging activities, whew, including dozens of vendors adding to the lively, bustling atmosphere at the airport into the evening. All right, let's see here. The, according to the manager, Shannon Fisher, she says, the Eclipse Viewing Party promises not only a unique spectacle in the sky, but also a vibrant atmosphere filled with aviation enthusiasts, diverse vendors, and exciting activities. Our airport is ready to soar with excitement as we anticipate the influx of in, uh, visitors who will undoubtedly make this event a truly unforgettable experience. A DJ will set the mood, ensuring a spirited atmosphere throughout the two-day event. There will also be time to indulge in a diverse array of culinary delights, with tempting food trucks offering a variety of delectable uh, treats. In addition, the Great Lakes Flight Center will be offering rides to experience the eclipse from the sky. So, if you're interested, uh, check that out over at the airport. Everybody getting into the swing of things. All right, let's go next to uh, the Reg Linnae Center for the Arts, who's a good partner of ours, especially through WRFA. Uh, let's see, basically they want you to know that they're doing some fundraising and they're going to be doing some upgrades. Would you like to know a little bit more? Let me tell you. The Reginaldi Center for the Arts has upgraded its lighting and sound equipment with the generous support of federal, excuse me, several foundations and agencies. The upgrades are estimated to save the organization and its community partners up to $20,000 annually while meeting industry standards. Improved LED lighting gear is more energy efficient and includes color changing cap capabilities. The new multi-speaker sound system, which meets the needs of most modern touring productions, also distributes audio more evenly throughout the theater and so on. Okay, so what are they doing? They're looking to do uh, about a $170,000 project and it's gonna cover just all sorts of things, such as, um, let me see here what I got. Um, to, to do a lot of these various productions, they need new kinds of um, uh, pieces of equipment and lighting and so forth, and rentals and so on. So uh, the Reg Linnae Center is certainly uh, one of the pearls of Chautauqua County, and they want to keep it going for a long, long time. So the, the upgrades is going to be a good thing for everybody here, and if you haven't been over there in a while, just simply a gorgeous facility. So if you're interested in learning more about uh, the foundation or what they're doing over there, give them a call and uh, you know, donate. All right, I promised uh, the next group that I would try to keep up with them. And this is the Dwyer Group, which is with your Chautauqua County uh, Veterans Group. That's slide 19, Jeff. Uh, it's their 2024 Gala's attendance. Okay, requests have hit an all-time high, okay? That's not aware. I guess we don't have that slide. That's okay. Uh, this is where they, uh, we had um, folks in from the veterans group here, and they are putting on a gala. They have a 30% increase in veterans that want to attend this year, and they are looking for supporters to give the gala a, a more opportunity for more veterans to attend at a low cost. 
Cindy Reedy is the chairperson of that whole project, and you met her a few weeks ago. And uh, basically, they uh, request tickets for $10. There's going to be drawings and so forth. And this is a wonderful experience for veterans to get together again, get dressed up, get out of the house, meet other veterans, bring their family members. And uh, oh, there we go. And there's a, a uh, let's see, what, let me get it. There's a bed frame bench which is being donated by uh, Scott Schultz. And the tickets are $10. So that's part of the fundraiser for the Dwyer. Dwyer, excuse me, Gala. Get my mouth working right here. Okay, so uh, once again, um, we are supporting the veterans projects here in Chautauqua County, and that's coming up uh, pretty soon here this spring. All right, let's continue on. I have this announcement from, I guess it's the Department of Health. In the United States, measles cases tend to originate from international travel. The disease is typically brought into the United States by unvaccinated people who get infected by other people people from other countries. Typically, two out of three of the unvaccinated travelers are Americans. They can spread measles to other people who are not protected against measles, which sometimes leads to outbreaks. So, CDC reports over 61 million doses of measles-containing vaccine uh, were postponed or missed during the pandemic years due to the COVID delays in supplementary immunization activities. This increases the risk of bigger outbreaks around the world, including the United States. The World Health Organization reports over 30,000 measles cases uh, by 40 of the region's 53 member non-U.S. State, uh, um, member states uh, between January and October 2023, compared to the normal 941 cases in 2022. 30,000 versus 941 here in the United States. Whew. And it goes on and on and on to talk about, you know, things you should think about. So, what to do if you plan to travel, including myself. Uh, people are at risk of measles infections if they have not been fully vaccinated or have not had measles in the past. I can check that box. I had the German measles. And travel to areas where measles is spreading. Individuals are encouraged to protect themselves, their families, and community by getting the measles vaccine, especially before traveling to an at-risk area. So, uh, let's see. If you're interested in learning more about a vaccine, Chautauqua County Health Department offers a vaccine to residents and you can give them a call at 716-753-4491. Says here one dose is 93% effective and two doses are 97% effective. So just think about it. Monitor your symptoms for three weeks upon return from a high risk area. Measles is highly contagious and can spread to others through coughing and sneezing. What are some of the symptoms? That includes a high fever, sometimes as high as 104, a cough, runny nose. Now everybody that's listening right now is thinking, oh my God, I got the measles. Red, watery eyes, or like pink eye, conjunctivitis. Say that 10 times fast, Justin. A rash, of course, three to five days. <laughs> Individuals who get sick with a rash and fever should call their doctor and tell them they have traveled and if they are vaccinated against measles, all right? So again, if you're interested in getting a vaccine, 716-753-4491. All right, so that's the, the, the amount of announcements we have from the community. And then I got a last minute announcement here to remind you that for those of you that watch um, Jim McQuiston in my video podcast, it's on YouTube. Oak Island Plus will be shown at 1 and 7 throughout this coming week. And we encourage you to watch it because it's a really good show. I won't tell you what it's about, but uh, we're always coming up with a different aspect of that whole storyline of the curse of Oak Island. So uh, we're going to take a little break. We'll be right back. Stay tuned. I never thought I could be brave enough. I'm not trained to do that kind of stuff. But I decided to take the first step. Is there a fire in you? Volunteer at www.fireinyou.org. We promoted that uh, concept of uh, volunteerism in the last couple of weeks here. Um, for some reason, our fire departments have kept and have been shrinking. Um, 
looking for some souls that are really interested in helping their communities. And you don't have to do it forever and ever, but at least, you know, try it out and see if you like it. Talk to your fire chief in your, in your town or community and uh, get down there and see what they do. Um, I've had a number of family members that have been volunteer firemen, fire uh, fighters in the past, and uh, men or women, you know, it's, uh, it's an equal opportunity. So uh, check it out. All right, as promised, we're going to do a deep dive into um, a, a landmark in Chautauqua County that I wonder if any of you have ever been to. I've walked by it. I think I maybe have uh, tapped on it. I might even poke my head into the door, but I have yet to go into it all the way because it wasn't open at the time I was there. We touched on this topic years ago when Mark Thomas was here uh, when he was involved with the uh, New York State Parks Department. And I think this particular project was just part of his uh, responsibilities at the time. We're going to be talking with Marla Conley, who is in charge, think about that, in charge of the Barcelona Lighthouse in Barcelona, New York. Do you know where Barcelona is? If you don't, that's okay. We're going to tell you all about it. I want to welcome to the show, Marla. Thank you. How? Appreciate you How do you like my voice today? It's kind of like this, this soft sound. Folks, I, uh, my voice is not up to speed today, so I'm, I'm using a different voice so that I don't <laughs> expend it all in one shot. So Marla, welcome to the show. And uh, you and I uh, met at my Rotary Club some time ago, and you did such a wonderful presentation. I said, we gotta have you on the show because what you're talking about, most people maybe never heard of. So tell us a little bit about who's Marla? Where, where do you come from? What, where have you been about? Well, I originated as a Michigander and took a long tour around the country to get here. I, via Montana, California, Washington, crossed back to Connecticut, and we landed in New York. Um, I did some schooling in Montana. What kind of schooling? Uh, parks and Rec Management mm -hmm. and some Natural Resource Management. So it was, oh, wow. it was a dual degree. And later on, much later, just a few years ago, I completed a MBA. So. So an MBA is a business degree, right? Mm -hmm. Whoa. This is all business. Yeah. Uh, uh -huh. and, we're, and folks, as we find out from Marla, this is uh, quite a responsibility that she, uh, she carries uh, with, with the parks department. So you went to school to be what, a ranger or what? I mean, what, well, I you gotta help me. I don't, I'm not familiar with this. I actually started school, not sure. I knew I wanted something with natural resources okay. and I changed my major six times. Mm -hmm and pretty much had enough credits in each field to get the overall natural resources degree. Okay. Um, and then I ended up not finding an internship one summer and working for a Boy Scout camp and went, ooh, I like this Parks and Rec stuff. Mm -hmm. So I ended up picking that one up too. So when you say natural resources, what does that include? Uh, everything from soils to wildfire management to trees, silviculture, um, range management, cows and corn, the whole gamut. I've, wow. I've had quite a bit of all of it. So how long have you been in New York State now? Been in New York State since 2001. Oh, so good, fair amount Good chunk, time. yeah. yeah. Uh, the first half of that was in the central area when we were living outside of Syracuse. Mm -hmm. um, and then through a major life change, I accepted a position out here. Okay. And that was, this is my 10th year out here. Okay. So um, when you presented uh, to my Rotary Club, you were responsible for more than just one venue or location. Can you tell us yes. a little bit about that? Sure. Um, they hired me to come manage all the parks within Chautauqua County. So we're part of the Allegheny region of New York State Parks, but all the ones out here are mine. So we've got Long Point on Chautauqua, Midway, the Barcelona Lighthouse, Lake Erie State Park and Sunset Bay State Marine Park. Sunset Bay? Yep. I did not know that was uh, part of the st state system. It is. All right, so let me share, got this right. Long Point, I'm familiar with. Mm -hmm. Midway, I'm familiar with. The Lighthouse, we're gonna talk about. Lake Erie State Park? Yep. Wait a minute, Long Point. What's the difference between Long Point and Lake Erie? Uh, Long Point's down on Lake Chautauqua. Lake Erie's up on Lake Erie. Oh, okay. My, my, I'm a little fuzzy on that one. And Sets Bay is up towards Silver Creek, right? Yep, it's in okay. Irving. All right. So what is your, your title then? I am park manager for those parks. Um, I do have some first level park managers 
uh, site managers for Long Point, Lake Erie, and Midway each have one. So there's, tr so how many people all together are under you? All together? Yeah. Depends on the season. No, well, anywhere well, from thirty to ninety. Holy mackerel! Oh. Okay, now I get the MBA. Yeah. <laughs> okay. It's a business. Yeah. So you work for the state? Yes. And who owns all these parks? The state? The state owns them, yes. Okay, very good. All right, so what are we going to concentrate on today? The Barcelona Lighthouse. Okay, so I'm going to let you just tell us a little bit about the, the lighthouse, the history of it, what, whatever. Well, first of all, where is Barcelona? Barcelona is in Westfield, New York. It's right up on the shoreline of Lake Erie. Um, it's, what, halfway between... Ripley and Brockton. Mm -hmm. so, um, it, what, what, it, people will say, well, Barcelona's in Spain, and they laugh at me. Um, and, and I'll do a little aside here. For uh, a couple of years, uh, I played with a band called the Barcelona Blues Band, and everybody was going like, what? Well, <laughs> didn't realize everybody was from that general area, you know, Westfield, Barcelona, Ripley, and so forth. And Barcelona was like a shipping uh, a fishing port or something what, what was it it was originally portland harbor um it was a cargo port what happened was they built the piers and the wharfs and the, all the cargo type industry things way back in the early late 1700s into the early 1800s and portage trail route 394 that comes down from the shoreline and goes straight down into mayville to lake chautauqua portage trail got its name because that's where they portaged all the cargo. They'd offload in Portland Harbor, which became Barcelona Harbor, carried it all down to Chautauqua to get it into the Mississippi River Basin. So once they got over the Chautauqua Ridge, you're changing water basins and where you can go via waterways. Mm. We yes. have a phone call already. Okay. Okay. Good morning, caller. It's Mike Felsman. How are you? Mike from Portland. Yeah, yeah. I, I thought I'd... I thought I'd interject a little geography into your discussion. I don't know what I don't know why I'm echoing because I got my sound all the way off. You sound okay. At, well, I sound okay to you. Yeah, yeah. Okay, all right. But uh, I know you mentioned Lake Erie State Park, and you were a little confused about it. It doesn't take much. <laughs> okay. Well, anyway, just for uh, edification, that park is between Dunkirk and Westfield. It's on Route Five. And if you know where Route 380 intersects with Route 5, it's just maybe, I don't know, the most, a half mile up from there. Mm -hmm. So uh, maybe your viewers would be familiar with that area, but it's, it's for, it's, it's kind of, we don't have a Rockton Park or Portland Park, per se, in the lake, but there is Lake Erie State Park mm -hmm. that's in the, well, town of Portland. Okay. So I thought you might want that little bit of information. Thanks, Mike. All right. You always got my back. <laughs> All righty. <laughs> All right. Hey, just for uh, another little thing I found is uh, you mentioned your uh, 500 show was in the Post Journal. Yeah, was that was cool? It, yeah, well, it was also, uh, I, can, I can do a little more of that. It was also in the Dunkin' <laughs> Now you're doing your Jimi Hendrix. <laughs> Well, thank you. Yes, uh, which is, well, I'm sure it was the same article, but it uh, it made our uh, northern paper as well. Well, thanks for sharing that. We're very proud of that. And, yeah, uh, yeah. And now we got to do another 500 because George Barella wants to be my thousandth guest again. And again, I'll be close to 80 when that happens. All right, Mike. Let's make a, a deal. You call me on the, the thousandth show. How's that? I will. Okay. I will. We'll see you. <laughs> All right. Have a good weekend. Bye bye. Bye. Okay. Well, there's the local uh, slant on that. Yeah. All right, thanks, Mike. All right, uh, where was I? So, the Portland Harbor became Barcelona. Correct. Do we know why Bar the name Barcelona? I've heard several different stories, and I'm always into good stories. Well, one one story that I've heard was that a gentleman from Barcelona had visited, and somebody here really liked the name, and they voted to change it. Mm -hmm. um, but also, Mike was from the town of Portland, and that's a little further down the coast. We couldn't have Portland Harbor, not in Portland. It didn't mm -hmm. make sense either. Right. So there, there was multiple different things that I've heard, and I'm not sure of the accuracy because yep. I wasn't there. Well, you know, and, and that's, again, being a historian, 
it, it's true of many of our villages and towns. Uh, 100 year, 200 years ago, they had different names. And why were they named what they were named? Ripley used to be called Quincy. Maybe John Quincy Adams, we don't know. Yeah. So anyways, but on goes the story. So we're not quite sure why Barcelona, but that's the name of it. Correct. Okay, so uh, do you know what kind of cargo they were shipping? I mean, I mean, we're talking 1790s, 1780s. Mm -hmm. We're talking the early, early years of our country, really. Yeah, all the types of things that they would have shipped back in that era. Mm -hmm. you know, I, I really, I'm not a historian. Right, well, <laughs> um, right. But, it's uh, all <laughs> fabrics, uh, beaver yeah. pelts, mm -hmm. uh, fish, salted things. Yep. And it would have mm -hmm. gone both directions, coming right. up from, you know, the Mississippi Basin as well. Right, yeah. and the word port portage is a French term for carry, portage, mm -hmm. and they would carry their boats from Mayville, the Lake Chautauqua, across Portage well, Road to Lake Erie. They were actually just hauling the cargo down the trail. Both things, both yep. things, right, mm -hmm. and that's what they call the old Portage Trail. Right? Correct. Yeah. So very, very cool. So, all right, so we got this natural harbor called Barcelona. Uh, where does the lighthouse come in? Well, because it became such a busy harbor, the Federal Service decided we should put a lighthouse there. So in 1828, they did commission a lighthouse. Uh, they allocated $5,000, and they finished it in 1829. Uh, amazingly, it was under budget for about $3,500. So then that got lit and into Federal Service. How was it lit? Originally, it was oil for the first couple of years. Then, th that was also the area between Westfield and Fredonia of working on natural gas, mm -hmm. learning how to use it for light. So the lighthouse got converted to natural gas. There was a stream about a mile away that was producing. They capped it and piped it up there in old wooden pipes. Oh my gosh. Uh, I guess they wouldn't have been old at the time, but yeah. so wooden pipes. And they did have to go back and forth a little bit. Sometimes the pipes would get too much condensation and the gas wouldn't flow. Mm -hmm. um, but that's what lit that tower. It is the world's first natural gas lighthouse. And with recent studies by the Historical Society and all, we think it might have been the only natural gas lighthouse in the world. We're really? not sure. Hmm. There's still juries out on that yet. Okay. So... You know, people think, well, lighthouses serve a purpose or whatever, but it, it really is like a beacon for ships, right? Yes, that's how they navigated back then. You know, we've got GPS now, but lighthouses were what you navigated off of. That and the stars. Now, it's my understanding that the Great Lakes are treacherous. Yes. And were there any wrecks along Lake Erie? And Hundreds of shipwrecks in Lake Erie. Near Barcelona? There's, there's actually more shipwrecks in Lake Erie than any other Great Lake. Yes, there are several off of Barcelona area. Uh, there is a, di a scuba dive operation that specializes in going out to those wrecks that's based out of the Barcelona Harbor. There was a, a ship called the Helen Strong. I don't know if you ever heard of that one back in 1846. I actually wrote a song about it. Oh. So I, I knew about one wreck, but I didn't know there was that many wrecks. Okay, so um, this may seem like a, a silly question, but how do you, how's it built? I mean, what did they use to build? I mean, the picture's behind me. Obviously, <laughs> I, you know, people can say, oh, you dummy, it's made out or whatever, but is that the original? And, that is, is, and how do they, what's the infrastructure of it? What keeps it together? Well, um, <clears throat> it was built with field stone. The base of the walls are about three feet thick. <clears throat> that was an old uh, lime mortar that they used at the time, and they would have parged the outside of it. Uh, then, the stairs are wooden, they're off of a main central beam, and they're spiraled all the way up. Each end of the stairs are into the wall. They're actually mortared right in. Um, and it, it's fairly tight, and there's a hatch at the top that you come up through, and that's where the light keeper would have taken care of the light. Now, who, who, who owned it, the government? Yes, the federal but government to start. Then what happened? It was taken out of service in 1859. So it only spent 30 years in actual federal service lit. Hmm. Um, what happened was in the late 40s, there was a, a huge storm that wiped out the wharf and everything down there. Um, and as they were rebuilding, the railroads came through. Oh, yeah. And that changed the entire face of transportation out that way. So after just a few years, the feds said, well, eh, this isn't worth it. So they, they closed it. It was sold into private service, private pans, in 1872, and it stayed there until 2007 when the New York State Parks were able to buy it. Why did they buy it? 
Well, part of our mission is historic preservation. Um, and that's what this is. I mean, it's, it's a major piece, you know, the first natural gas lighthouse in the world. That's significant. Nearly 200 years old. Mm -hmm. That's, wow. Yep, a lot of people don't realize how old Chautauqua County is yeah. and that it was really the, the frontier when the United States became a country, mm -hmm. you know, after the colonies. And um, you mentioned that they were bringing goods and services from, let's say, uh, up through Lake Chautauqua, which would come from the Allegheny River or wherever, going down into the Mississippi or coming up the Mississippi all the way back up through and then onto the Great Lakes. Mm -hmm. I mean, there's, the waterways in, in our country are incredible. and. Mm -hmm. We're part of that. Yep. I mean, people don't think about that because, like yep. you said, trains and roads now. But it, I, is it still used? I mean, is the area still water um, important, I guess is the word? Um, it's primarily a recreational harbor at this point. Mm -hmm. To my knowledge, there are still a couple of commercial boats for fishing that go out mm -hmm. and the, the scuba dive boat that goes out as well commercially. Okay. Um, but I believe it's primarily recreational at this point. Um, had that storm not happened and it stayed, you know, a massive cargo harbor, we could have been like Erie, or Erie, Pennsylvania. That could have been us. Yeah. Yeah, just. A question came through while we were talking. Did the light rotate, or was it just this? It constant? was stationary. Okay. Um, it actually, when it was gas, there were two rows of pipes that kind of came out and up, and then they were lit, and there were two rows. They were staggered, and there was a big reflector behind it. Gotcha. So it was stationary pointing out. Like a big mirror or something mm -hmm. like that. Two years before they closed it, it did get a Fresno lens but we don't know what happened to that. It, it went when the lighthouse was closed. So okay. It was only there for two years. So what is your role at the, at the lighthouse? Um, primarily management and working on getting it rehabilitated. That's the big lighthouse project right now. Okay, is, before we get to the project, okay. what is there today for people to see? And then I'll let you go into the sure. project. How's that? So Absolutely. What's, this, what's today's status of the lighthouse? Okay. We opened the site in 2016 to the public. Okay. So you can come in. We have a small museum in the Keeper's Cottage. There is a small gift shop as well. We have been letting people into the base of the tower. We, you can't go up because we'll talk about the conditions and things. But that's what there is right this moment to do. We, we have... The Chautauqua County Historical Society folks have been wonderful in helping us build a museum with wonderful displays. Um, that, that's what you can see right now, along with beautiful views of the harbor and the lake itself. Yeah. Did anybody live in the lighthouse? Yes. Oh. Yeah, they, they lived in the keeper's cottage right next to the lighthouse. Oh, that's right. There's a little building next to our Yes. Okay. Yep. And they lived there in the early years. Mm -hmm. okay. All the way up when it was in private hands, people lived there. Hmm. Um, okay. Well, right. I think the state owning it now is the first time somebody hasn't lived there, really. So. Maybe you can rent it out. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so presently, museum, gift shop, walk the grounds, mm -hmm. enjoy the view, and Barcelona Harbor is absolutely gorgeous. Yes. And people fish there. There's there's uh, fishing contests and things like that. Uh, I, I go down there sometimes with my wife, and we just sit there and enjoy the, the view sometimes, just for 20 minutes. And of course, there's good restaurants and things like that in the area. So I'm going to be quiet now. I know you have given Jeff a bunch of slides, and you can call those up as we go along and just kind of narrate what you want us to know about what's coming. Okay. Um, if we can go to the current property slide. Okay. Uh, it's probably slide four for him. Okay. So we'll see if we get there. All right, we'll give him a second to do sure. that. So this is a layout. Of okay. a, all right, there we go. Yep. Beautiful. So why don't you walk us through what we're okay. looking at here. So what I wanted to show was that the, the little dotted line shows the parcel that we bought. It's got the lighthouse, the cottage on it, and the little garage next to it to the driveway there. That's the piece that the state bought in 2007. In 2019, we completed a purchase of all of the rest of that property that's outlined in orange. Um, I don't know. So... We own right down to the water right now, down the face of the bluff and the lower, there's a little fisherman's cottage down there. So that's what we're working with right now. So we're trying to develop the entire site. So there's a, a so overall So we're looking about plan. an acre or two? Yeah, there's a couple acres there. Okay. The upper site was just one acre and we added a couple more to it with the lower. Now there's residential uh, houses or cottages all around there, right? So you, you're, it's like you've got to be a good neighbor. And mm -hmm. so are, are, any, any feelings from those folks of what's well, going on? To the right of that picture is the town of Westfield. They own the marina, or the, the pier there. Mm -hmm. 
and to the left of the picture is Monroe's marina area. Okay, gotcha. So those are our two immediate neighbors. Mm -hmm. um, the town has been amazing to work with. They were part of what helped us open in 2016 to the public. Great. Um, and we're, we're working on big projects down there with everybody. So. Okay, so uh, a nice collaborative effort. Do you work mm -hmm. grants and things together? Or? Yep, we've been, I've been doing a lot of grant work. Um, the town has given us access to the lower property through the pier area um, because there is no direct access right now that's it's easy to get to. So they've been a real great partner with that. So um, for those that are listening right now, uh, if you've never been there, the uh, lighthouse is sort of on an elevation above the lake. Yes. It, it's and the marina that the town owns is below on mm -hmm. the water, mm -hmm. right? And then you have the various other harbors and private properties mm -hmm. side to side. So you're looking down the hill, right? Yes. Which is a very pretty vista, by the way. Mm -hmm. Okay, so I'll be quiet. Okay, so the concept of the project is on the next slide. Mm -hmm. um, nope, back back a couple. Uh, be slide uh, four, I think, for you? Maybe? Okay, what, what's, okay. what's it's Basically, it shows a picture of the plan, what's going to happen down below. Okay, so um, can you find that one, Jeff, as we go along? He'll switch. Okay, which that's fine. Way. We can go with here. We've got a whole bunch of projects in different phases right now. Mm -hmm. The project that we're, phase we're in right now, phase one, is tower restoration, garage work, which is going to actually give us public restrooms on the site. Right now, we do not have public restrooms if you visit us. Right, you have to go to the marina. Yep. Right. Mm -hmm and then the site work that'll support all of those things. But what we had up right there was the restoration and access. That's, that's the big piece, okay. <laughs> is the tower itself. That's, that's the, the big gemstone that we need. So what does the tower need? It needs a lot. If he could go back to that other page he just had a second ago. Okay, um, there we Yes, go. that one, there okay. Go. So when you go up the tower, if you look in the upper corner there, you can see the stairs going up with light coming through them. Um, the stairs have a lot of rot in them. They're not safe, so we can't let the public up. And when we go up as employees, we actually tie into a harness and a safety fall protection and things uh, to maintain the light. Is this the original wood? A lot of it is. Wow. A lot of it is. Yeah. So the project is going to fix the stairs. It's actually going to replace the entire staircase going up. It's going to replace most of the mortar in the building. They're going to be chipping out all the old stuff because while it was in private hands, mortar that wasn't appropriate was put in and is actually causing additional damage. Right. Uh, with the best of intentions, but we're going to take all of that out and fix it and put the right things in. And you said that it's made out of field stone. Yeah, it's a field stone. So we're talking kind of roundish stones that mm -hmm. you just pluck right out of the farmyard. Yep. Yeah, cool. And there's a little bit of brickwork in some of the arches there. These are the stairs that lead up to the hatch and you can see the hatch there. We're gonna widen that a little bit. It's uh, very narrow, so we wanna be able to get people up there to have a good view. So when you say the hatch, that's the entry where the light would have been? Yep, up to the top platform. Okay, all right. So, so that's... How, how, how wide is the, the lighthouse? I mean, maybe you don't know that, I mean... I'm not certain, but it does taper up, so it's much wider at the base. So I mean, it's the, the size of a, of a living room? I mean... Yeah, at the bottom, at like the top. feet wide, something like At that? the top, it, from wall to wall is me to you. So we're talking um, six feet wide at the top or something like yeah. that? Yeah. Wow. Yeah. It's, it's not real big at the top. Okay. I just got a question that just threw my text message from a gentleman from Eden, New York. He, you know, people ask fun questions, but that's a legitimate question. Okay. Um, you, there's so many shows right now about the paranormal and special lighthouses. Are there any stories? We've actually been asked a few times, and we don't have any. We don't have any stories that we've been able to come up with that anybody's been able to give us. Um, I don't have one to okay, share. Okay, so History Channel's not going to be down there to film any uh, paranormal no, the, experiences? No, a couple of the shows have called us and asked, but yeah. we didn't have anything to share. Okay, Eden, there's your, there's your answer. <laughs> okay, thank you. So that's how the show rolls. People okay. call me or sex me, so cool. Absolutely. All right, so we got a tower that needs some, some infrastructure and some uh, cosmetics. All right, so it, I, how do you know what the tower should look like? I mean, did you have drawings? There are... We don't have original drawings, they don't exist. There's a lot of uh, detailed verbiage in what was to be built. Mm -hmm. 
We do have some older pictures on slide that was the brief history slide there, uh, number two, slide two for him. For reference. Okay, yep. let's see if we can get There's those a, a few pictures there. Okay. Um, was there a particular style of, oh, there they are. Was there, like, Europe had a lot of lighthouses and, mm -hmm. and windmills. Is this based on any particular country? Not that I'm aware of. Okay. Um, so it, it's a fairly different looking lighthouse. All right. So. so there's your brief history. So go ahead. So the pictures, the oldest one that we have is, I think it was 1890, and that's the top right picture there. Mm -hmm. um, you can see it's a smaller cottage at that point in time. Uh, chimneys right in the middle. Uh, if you look at the bottom picture, you can see that they did expansions over the years while it was in private hands. Mm. Um, so it's my understanding is that originally it was a one floor cottage um, and six people lived in it together with the first light keeper. Really? <laughs> yep. That's so the light keeper would have been hired by the, co the government? Mm -hmm. um, Joshua Lane was the first light keeper and mm. he made $300 a year. Hmm. I don't even know what that means in, in today's money. <laughs> I'm not sure either. That's, that's the information we and have. what was his last name? Lane. Lane. Joshua Lane. There was a, a series of light keepers. I'm, unfortunately, I'm not good enough to remember all their yeah, names. that's okay. That's <laughs> so. okay. Okay, this is fun. Okay. So, uh, where we go next? Well, let's see. So, so you're going to do cosmetics. You're going to do the, uh, the, the stairs and fix the hatch. Mm-hmm. Okay. And uh, what's the, the top of the lighthouse made out of? Is it metal? There, there's metal poles that are holding up that roof. Mm -hmm. um, the top is actually a cement cap, oh, really? and the outer edges are all wooden. There's little benches up there that. Why does that make me nervous? It should, because yeah. they're all rotten. Oh, it's all going to be replaced. Concrete above my head. Wow. <laughs> yep. Not the. The project will include replacing all the railing and things because yeah. it is rotten. Um, so the public will be able to go to the top. That is the plan. And, I hate to ask this question, but I'm going to ask: Will there be a charge? Mm. Not currently planned. Um, there could eventually be. Okay. I, you know, just like any other historic site, um, we will eventually be a full-on historic site, open 360 some odd days a year. That's the plan. Yeah. Right now, we're still only open seasonally. Well, we go through everything. Okay. So I think, is this the next one, future phases? Yeah, the future okay. phases, that'll work. Wonderful. Um, there's a whole bunch of things we'll do after we get these three pieces done. Okay. First is gonna be slope stabilization. They're right. gonna tell do what, some- Tell me what that means. That means that behind the lighthouse, um, if you look at the picture right behind you, mm -hmm. you can see that just past the lighthouse, it hits the, the drop off of the bluff. Oh yeah. So they are going to basically do some probably rip wrap um, what's going so to hold that slope for the next two hundred years? There, right behind me. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it, it it drops off pretty good. It's very steep. I've, I've ridden my bike from Ripley to the lighthouse. Thanks, uh, Justin. See how that, that's beautiful magic here. <laughs> I can't, I'm getting the wrong hand here. Right. So <laughs> this is the cottage here. Yep. Yeah. And then all the way down here, I, I, I'm going to guess it's got to be at least seventy five hundred foot drop. Uh, it's more forty, forty ish drop. Forty really? or fifty. Yep. Feels a lot heavier. Maybe, it, maybe I'm thinking when you're standing down on to the, the edge, it does look yeah. like a lot. All right, but yes, so it's, it, that's it, still a good drop. Well, that's five stories. You yes, know, that's it is still, still a good drop. All right, and it's kind of steep. I mean, mm -hmm. like a quick angle to it. Yes, it's so. What do you do to do fix that? They'll use riprap, kind of what you would see along shorelines that keep it from eroding. Mm -hmm. So they'll they'll put that in place, and then and hopefully we'll not have to worry about it for another 200 years to keep right. it in place. Right. Okay. Um, Along with that, they will, in our next phases, put in some trails and stairs and slopes going down so that you can get from the top to the bottom without having to go all the way out and around to get down there. Okay, so and I'm assuming there's gonna be maybe historical signage mm -hmm. or little stops like you see in a lot of parks, you know. Yep, there will this be. This is where Lane worked and here's his picture or whatever, you know. There'll like be that. a lot of that. The, That's cool. the, the tentative plan is to do the lighthouse interpretation in the upper level and then the commercial fishing mm -hmm. and things that happened all in the lower level. So where you can know your information from the Historical Society? That's the primary source. You know, um, what, what could be better? It's right there in, yep. in Westfield. Yep, oh, exactly. Great, great organization to work with for they, sure. They've been amazing to us. Okay, and I know a lot of them uh, have a keen interest in this and also that there are artifacts that will help you there. Okay. Yes. All right, so that's fix the slope. So what yep. was the next fix one? Fix the slope. Let's bring it back up, Jeff. Okay. And, and putting in the connections, the different trails and pathways that will you know connect the two pieces of the property so nobody has to rappel down the side. So my experience has been when you were doing these projects, you there's actual 
um, what do I want to call them, landscape architects? Yes. That this is, this isn't Doc Hamill saying, oh, let's make a trail over here. No, this is all based on slopes and wheelchair accessibility, yes. ADA, kind of, you know, um, making sure you're all in compliance with that sort of thing. All right, I'll be quiet again and you keep going. Okay. You're doing a great job. All right, well, there'll be some Keeper's Cottage updates. Um, we'll make a better bathroom in there for the public, things like that. So what's in there now? The museum and the gift shop. Okay, so there's no, no housing. No, there's no housing. What would have been the two bedrooms upstairs are actually offices. Um, I am actually based out of the lighthouse for my office. You're in the lighthouse? I am in the lighthouse how cottage. Cool yes, that? I am. Very I love cool. it. <laughs> and, and how old is the cottage? Is, is old it's the as same age. Really? Yes. Mm -hmm. And I'm assuming it's a wood structure with some kind it's, of a stone foundation? It's actually a stone foundation and it is stone. It is oh. field stone structure as well. I'm going to have to look um, at that closer. Wow. Yep. And in the basement you can actually still see the timbers underneath the first floor that have bark on them from the trees. They're all sistered now, but wow. all the original timbers are still there too. They're sistered. What does that mean? That means that we've had to put modern lumber next to it to hold it oh, up. Okay. It was gonna, they're, okay. they're kind of soft and squishy. Gotcha. Well, <laughs> so. I guess After at 200, 200 years, years old, I might be so <laughs> often squishy. Okay, so we talked about the slope. We talked about the keeper's cottage. Yep. Keep uh, the lower property has another f cottage on it, and we're going to renovate that. It's actually got really good bones. It's got a great roof on it. We're whoa, whoa, whoa. Another cottage? Who, yes. who owned that? What was the purpose? Uh, it was a little fisherman's cottage. Um, the la the folks that, that was in that lower property piece that we bought. Mm -hmm. um, it was the Remelts owned it last that we bought it from them. Mm -hmm. And the cottage that's there, we intend to also add museum space to, and that'll be kind of our primary hub for interpreting the commercial harbor. Gotcha. Um, with the cargo and the fishing and all that all good right. stuff. You, you know, I'm gonna ask you, how old is that? I mean, is that old as well? We're not positive. Um, we haven't been able to determine that for sure. So how I would, big is the cottage? Uh, yeah, again, it's at the size of a, of a, a small house or is a very room? small house. It's it's truly a tiny cottage. Mm -hmm. you, there's one room and there's a small what might have been a bedroom that could fit a twin bed type size, mm -hmm. a little bathroom and a porch. That that's it. Perfect. <laughs> there so, was so what are you going to do with it? What, what, what's going to be the new purpose for adding museum space to oh. to be looking at the commercial harbor? Okay, the so that's industry. where you're going to yes. have the, the mm -hmm. Pictures of the the mm -hmm. cargo ships coming and going yep. and, the, and whatever you, you have available. That's the plan. Okay. And there was also a net house down there where they would have stored and made nets uh, that was falling in on itself when we bought it. We took it down for safety. A net house. Mm -hmm. So, yep. okay. It's right there. That, that's what it looked like. Right, which one are we looking at here? The, the, top? Uh, the upper corner, yep. Top left, I guess, for yep. people who are watching. I, I guess I didn't know that was there. So. They would store their nets there, obviously. Mm -hmm. Do you know anything about the net making? I mean, is that there? Old? There's information, but I, I'm not You're thoroughly not a read net on maker it. Person. <laughs> not yet. Uh, okay. So, um, so what, what is that going to become? I mean, what's the purpose? We're for going that? to rebuild the net house as a replica. Uh, the front portion of it will be more interpretive and talking about fishing and net making and things. Mm -hmm. The back end is where we're going to do our little maintenance area, hide our mower. <laughs> You know, that would be really cool if, you you know, you got somebody there. I'm not trying to tell you what to do. But you go to some of these uh, Revolutionary War sites or whatever, and they're, they're showing people making things, you know, brooms mm -hmm. or whatever. Would that be cool? So somebody that could actually show you how to make nets? I'm sure there are. It'd be interesting. Yeah. Um, in that same slide, the, the bottom slide was a, a net reel that sits at the schoolhouse in the Barcelona Village. Um, the Historical Society has promised that to us to add to our displays down there to, to build on the net making thing. Okay, and so when they had their nets out, they would, um, when it was time to bring them in, they would wind them in? Is that the idea? That's what my understanding is. Okay, we're, um, we're both taking a good long yep, guess at this. We, okay. we are. I, okay, I, I, you know, I, I told you I was going to There are others who are experts at this stuff that All know right. it inside out. Um, That's okay. I'm more project managing. <laughs> well, this is exciting. I'm really interested. Yeah, the, I'm going to have to see if there's any connection to Ripley on all this as we go along. There might be. I don't know. Mm -hmm. um, the other thing that was in the picture with the cottage underneath it is a fishing boat that the Historical Society has let us know that they have, they're getting it from the Westfield Fisheries, the Irwin family. So they have said that that will come over to our property as well to sit next to the cottage and be, you know, really talk about the commercial fishing industry there. Okay, for those that are listening on the radio right now, I always try to do a little description for them. We're looking at a, looks like a red little Fishing boat. Mm -hmm. I don't want to say tugboat, but it kind it's of kind looks of a like tug. a tugboat. It's a fishing tug. Yep. You know, and um, a lot of people don't realize that Lake Erie was quite the fishing uh, yes. area, all the Great Lakes. And 
this went back, oh my gosh, to Champlain. And I mean, we're talking to 15, 16, 1700s. Mm -hmm. This whole region was big time fishing. Yes. And they would come and go down the St. Lawrence into the Great Lakes and back and forth, salting the fish and trading. And, and the 13 colonies as mm -hmm. well. So not just into Europe. So where did this boat come from? How old? Do you have any idea? I'm not sure of the age of the boat. It is a, a family boat from that family, the fishing family. Mm -hmm. um, they still operate a commercial boat at the Westfield Fisheries. Mm -hmm. um, th this boat is the Sally Jo Irwin, and I'm I'm so excited about it. <laughs> I really am. So we okay. want to really tell the story of commercial fishing. Okay, you must be very popular today. I don't usually get two calls in, in a show, <laughs> so we have a second caller. You ready? Good sure. morning, caller. Uh, good morning. This is Linda Spalding. Good morning, Jack. Good morning, good morning Maria. Linda, I, I don't. I don't want to interrupt your wonderful presentation. It's fascinating. Cool. Uh, huh? yeah. I'm just thrilled with it. So thank you for coming on and sharing this wonderful information with us. Um, Linda, have you ever been to the lighthouse? I've been by. I've never been inside. So I, 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 it's fascinating. I love it down there. I would. I'd love to live down there. And I understand that. Uh, years ago, uh, w when when the lighthouse was working and before the the great uh, disaster, it was a very popular place. The whole lake shore was. There was all kinds of little restaurants and cottages. Yeah, and, I mean, was, all up and down the lake shore. I mean, I've got old maps, f fifty hundred years ago, and you look, and those places don't even exist anymore. But it was the place to be. You know, they had their little special spots. You know like Mason's Rocks or Old Orchard, this or that. You know. Oh, there we go. Yes. And so, yeah, very cool. It, it was laid out a planned city. It, it could have been Erie, PA. Wow. Yeah, yeah, I understand that it was really thriving at one time. Well, thank you very much, and I won't hold up your presentation. Okay, thanks, Lou. Have a great weekend. Uh, let me digress real quick. Uh, a lot of people don't realize that uh, Erie, Pennsylvania used to be part of New York State, right? Mm -hmm. And then you go down Route 5, I guess, somewhere along the line, and there's an actual uh, marker that says the original New York State-Pennsylvania line, I believe. And um, Pennsylvania needed a, a harbor on Lake Erie. It was landlocked at that point. Mm -hmm. So they move all that. And as you say, Portland probably would have been the uh, Erie, Pennsylvania. Mm -hmm. So very cool. Yeah. All right, we still have about two minutes left, so I don't want to hold you up. Oh so just okay. keep on moving. Okay, well, let's jump down to, uh, boy. Panic not. <laughs> well, we'd love to have everybody come visit. Yeah. Um, the grounds are open 365 days a year, dawn what, to dusk. Well, the hour, oh, there you go, dawn to dusk. Yep. Right. Uh, Memorial Day to Columbus Day, we run the Keeper's Cottage and Museum 10 to 4 okay. daily. And then from Columbus to Christmas, weekends 10 to 4. Free of charge? Free of charge. Okay. Um, what I did want to share with folks, though, is this season, because we are starting all these projects, you won't be able to go into the lighthouse base. There it will be fenced off. You won't be able to get real close. They're going to be working. So for safety, we have to keep our work sure construction do. areas sure separate. Okay. Um, what kind of things are you selling in your gift shop? I see t-shirts. What are little yep, lotions? Yep, there's t-shirts. There's some um, porcelain objects with the lighthouse on it. Mm -hmm. We've got stickers and chocolate and keychains, you know, the usual souvenir Proceeds things. are going to the project? Or? Yes, all the proceeds stay with the project. So Wants to donate to the project? Is there a way yes, to do that? Yes, they absolutely can. There's another page here. Let's see. It's it's the one just before you had up okay. funding. Right. Um, they can donate through what's called the Natural Heritage Trust. Okay. It is a 501c3, all tax deductible. It, their mission is parks fundraising. Mm -hmm. So everything you donate to them goes directly to this project and can't be used for anything else. There we go, the QR code. Um, there's the QR so code. It people is watching TV, you just put your phone right on that thing, it'll pop right up. It's cool. All right, keep going. Yeah. Okay. Um, so it's tax deductible. It is tax deductible. It can only be used for this purpose. The Natural Heritage Trust there, it's a wonderful organization, and that's part of how we're funding this. Uh, we've all, we're also funding it through a grant um, from the Maritime Heritage Grant from the National Park Service, uh, Department of the Interior. Also, the Benjamin Prescott chapter, Daughters of the American Revolution, has been really good to us as well. Um, they actually have the plaque that's above the door on the lighthouse. They placed that on the 100-year anniversary. Wow. And we're almost at the 200-year anniversary. Okay. Uh, additionally, if you want to get involved in other ways with the, the lighthouse and the project, we are trying to build a Friends of the Lighthouse group. 
I need some leadership. If anybody wants to really get involved, uh -oh. I'm looking for that. We've run out of time. Oh, well. All right, okay. is your phone number for them to call? There is not a phone number, but the Barcelona LH at parks.ny.gov would be the email if he All has right. that slide. Or come down to the lighthouse and talk to you. Okay. All right, folks, I hope you've enjoyed this as much as I do. you got to come back. Okay. Okay. Uh, my guest today has been um, um, Marla Conley, who's the... Uh, uh, head of the Parks Department here in Chautauqua County for the New York State. And we've been talking about the Barcelona Lighthouse. So get over there and check it out. Go buy some trinkets, support the, the project, get a good t-shirt. I'm going to get one, I think. I don't have one. So I uh, hope you've enjoyed the show. Uh, and Marla, seriously, uh, as you're getting maybe another six months, eight months down the road, let's do, let's do an update. How's that? Okay. Because there's so much more to talk about. We it, and we'll have some progress to show. Okay. All right, but have a safe weekend because I know the snow is coming, and we'll see you next week. Bye now.